I'm going to show you how to solve problems with relativistic velocity. Um, and before we do it with relativistic speeds, where we've got to use a special formula, let me just talk about how you do this when they're not going relativistically fast, right? So, so here's an example. This person here on the car is going to throw a ball at 30 miles per hour, but that's with respect to their frame of reference. Their frame of reference is moving 60 miles per hour to the side, and of course we're standing unwisely in front of this, right? Well, in this case, the speed that we see is going to be the 60 that they're already going. If they didn't throw the ball, it would be going that fast, right? Plus the 30, right? So the speed we see is 60 plus 30. We're going to see 90 miles per hour. Okay, that's how fast the ball is. So if you ever want to throw a baseball, a 90 mile an hour pitch, just throw it from a moving car. This is called a Galilean transform, okay? Uh, um, and all it just means is that it's not tricky. It's just what you'd think it would be. Let me do another example. So in this case, notice that we added that addition made sense, right? Okay, so here's another question, right? Here's uh, Mary. She's on this car, and the car is going only 30 miles per hour, right? And she throws this, um, this ball toward us, and we see the ball going... 75 miles per hour, but now the question is, what speed did she throw it with respect to her car? Well, we know that 30 plus that equals 75, so it must be 75 minus 30, right? To figure out what that speed is that she threw it with respect to the car, right? It's 75 minus 30, okay? And that's going to be 45 miles per hour. That's the speed that she pitched the ball relative to her car. Does that make sense? I'm like all hyperparent. What if I got the math wrong? I didn't get it wrong. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, so so now let me just show you a relativistic example. Okay, let's suppose that you know Tom is going 0.85 times the speed of light here, right? And he throws the ball at 0.56 times the speed of light. Well, you know it's going to be faster. We're going to see that ball going faster than the cart is going. The cart's going 0.85c. But it can't be, it can't be 0.85 plus 0.56 because, well, that's 8, 9. That's 1.41 the speed of light. That's more than the speed of light. It can't be that, right? So that's what these clever formulas are for, okay? One for, uh, I think this is the one that's in the data packet, right? Okay? But notice that you can, you can set this thing up. This, these are the velocities that you're dealing with, right? Um, and in this case, we want to do the addition one, okay? This is the guy that we're going to use because in this case, we would, we would tend to want to add those, right? Okay? Th what this does is it lets it approach the speed of light, okay? And I'm not going to worry about what all of these little things are. These are just two velocities, and I know I want to add them. It could just be A and B. I think this notation system is, is very complicated. So let me just bust this out for you, right? Okay? I know that I want to add, so I'm going to go, um, the relative velocity that we see, okay, is going to be uh, 0.85 plus C, right, plus 0.56 C, right, and then that is um, 1 plus 0.85, right, times 0.56, and these are all times C and times C. Right, and then that's over c squared. That's the formula that you wrote down on the last thing, right? Notice that I don't really need to put the c's down there, do I? Because those guys are going to cross off, right? Okay, so now I'm just going to plug this into my calculator. Left parenthesis, 0 0.85 plus 0 0.56 divided by left parenthesis, right? And I did a right parenthesis, and then divided by left parenthesis, 1 plus 0.85 times 0 0.56, right parenthesis. And I get that it's um, 0.96, I'm sorry, 9, it's actually, I get 0.955284, okay, for my velocity, or for my, my speed, okay, with a couple sig figs, it'd be 0.96 the speed of light. Okay, let me show you another example where we would tend to subtract, and we'll just, instead of a plus here, we're going to put a minus sign there, okay. Okay, so... 0.67 the speed of light, and we see we see the car right going 0.667 the speed of light, and we're sitting here and we observe the ball that Mary throws 
as going 0.8 to the speed of light, right? Now, subtracting those, subtracting those uh, won't um, yield a problem. We won't get a number bigger than the speed of light. But here's the deal. Remember that this frame of reference is shrunken. Okay, so the speed that she threw it with respect to that actually is going to be a little bit greater than the difference between those. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we're going to use the subtraction one, right? So we're going to go 0 0.82 minus 0 0.67 times the speed of light, right? Okay, uh, and then we're going to go 1 minus 0 0.82 times 0.67. And if you want to put the C in there, I suppose we should be good little role models right now, right? The Cs, they just cancel out there, right? And then you end up with whatever speeds you did up there, right? Okay, so this is going to be parenthesis, left parenthesis, 0.82 minus 0.67, right parenthesis, divided by left parenthesis, 1 minus 0.82 times 0.67. Right parenthesis, and I get 0 0.33288 uh, meters per second, right? Uh, and then notice, notice that uh, 0.82, if you just subtract these, right? Okay, this is wrong. You get the wrong answer. It's not the same thing. Right, you only get like 0.15 more. Why is this more? Well, that's because, remember, this frame of reference is shrunken, so the speed inside that frame of reference, which is what we're asking, is more than, than, what, than um, uh, relative to that, right, than, than the difference between the two frames that we observe this way. Okay? I think that's the, all the examples. I'm going to bust out some more examples in the whiteboard problems.